you can now create one minute videos locally on an RTX 3060 laptop which has 6 GB of VRAM with a neural network structure known as frame pack from Stanford. So given a reference image like this, this is the one minute video which has been generated. So you can look at this particular video. So if you look carefully at this video, you will see that the arm movements and other things are not coming properly over here. The physics right, of the arm movement and other things. But what is interesting is that this kind of videos can be generated on a laptop with an RTX 3060 having just 6 GB of GPU VRAM. So that's the key thing over here. Right. So this is another uh, example over here. So this is the reference image. This is the video which has been generated. Right. As the lighting changes, this is a one minute video. If you see over here, the hand movements and other things, you, you will notice some artifacts. Okay. So these are five seconds video which have been generated from this particular model. These are some interesting five seconds video. So you can see this. Right. You can see this movement over here from this particular image. I wouldn't say that these videos are really impressive or something, but you can generate videos locally. So that's like a key thing over here. I wouldn't say some of the videos are really great or something. Some videos are really nice. Some videos are not good. Okay. So I wanted to try this particular model on a collab notebook. So what I did over here was that I installed this particular, you know, frame pack over here in this collab notebook. This is an L4 instance. So L4 instance has 22.5 GB of GPU VRAM. This is a paid instance. Okay. So here I can launch the Gradio demo and I can generate one minute long videos. So initially I tried the Gradio demo over here. So I uploaded a video of Michael Jackson, uh, image of Michael Jackson, not a video. And I said a man performing a moonwalk on a dance floor with shining disco lights. And I wanted to generate a five second video. And the video which was generated was this. Just look at the arm movements. It looks really weird. That's my first impression. Okay. So then I wanted to try for slightly longer. So I wanted to generate a full 120 seconds long video, which is two minutes video. Uh, so it takes a long time to generate on this particular collab notebook on this GPU instance. That's what I've seen. Okay. Uh, so I've been running it for more than an hour over here now, right? More than one and a half hours to generate, say around your 15, 20 seconds of video. Okay, so for 20 seconds of video generation, it has taken close to 90 minutes or more, in fact, okay, to generate uh, your 20 seconds of video, it has taken more than 90 minutes over here, right? So what it does is that it uh, generates one second of video and then it extends it to two seconds, then it extends to three seconds, then it extends to four seconds and so on. That's what I have observed. And for every second of video, which is getting generated, I am seeing around, you know, two minutes, three minutes and so on. Right. Uh, so it, it has taken close to 90 minutes to generate this 20 seconds video on this particular collab instance. Uh, so this is a, again, an image of Michael Jackson. And I said the person does disco dance moves on a dance floor with revolving disco lights. And I gave, uh, you know, this prompt as an input. And this is the video which has been generated. Again, it looks a little bit weird over here. The lights and other things are there, but the arm movements and this thing, uh, it looks a little bit weird for me. I'm not really happy with the kind of videos which is coming out of this model. Okay. Now, if you look at what it uses, in the backend over here is that I'm seeing it makes use of clip text model for the text encoder. It makes of C-clip vision model for the, what you call a vision encoder on the original image. Then it makes use of auto encoder, KL, Hunyan video for the video. Then it makes use of a dynamic swap, Hunyan video transformer 3D model pack. So it makes use of a mixture of these models. And here it says that, you know, it, uh, it is moving this dynamic swap, Hunyan video transformer 3D model packed with preserved memory of 6 GB. It is again offloading this particular model to preserve memory of 8 GB. Okay. So here, if you look at this Gradio demo, it says that, uh, you know, uh, GPU inference preserved memory. So 6 GB of memory is what is required for it to run the model. Okay. That is what it says over here. Right. Now, if you go to the project page and try to understand what is the technique they are really using over here. Okay. What they're saying is that a next frame or a next frame section prediction model looks like this. You have frames at various timestamps, input frames, and the next frame uh, section prediction model is actually predicting the next set of frames. So we have many input frames and want to diffuse some new frames. The idea is that we can encode, encode the input frames to some GPU layout like this. Okay. Uh, so this chart shows the logical GPU memory layout. Frame images are not stitched or say the context length of each input frame. Okay. Each frame is encoded with different patchifying kernels to achieve this. 
So you have multiple frames loaded onto the GPU memory. Okay. So for example, in Hunyuan video, a 480p frame is likely 1536 tokens if you are using some pacifying kernel. Then if change it to this 244 pacifying kernel, a frame is 192 tokens. In this way, we can change the context length of each frame. Okay. The more important frames are given more GPU resources. In this example, F0 is the most important as it's the nearest frame to the next frame prediction target. Okay. So it is given more space in the GPU. So this is their technique for, you know, reducing the GPU memory layout. Okay. So the above idea is a very brief uh, concept. Many uh, questions can be asked like, what if importance of frame does not follow this simple pattern? What if I want different compression rate? If I, if I want image to video, isn't the first frame most important? What if I have some user frames and I want those frames to be more important? So this is where you have something called frame pack scheduling. So you can have different ways like geometric progression, progression with duplicated levels, geometric progression with temporal kernel. So you can have different ways of packing these frames. So in this way, all these schedulings are O of 1. That is how you are getting this, uh, you know, faster or what you call uh, the, uh, the results over here. Okay. So drifting can happen in next odd prediction model, right? Drifting refers to quality degradation as the video becomes longer. Sometimes the problem is also called error accumulation or exposure bias. Okay. So you can find an arbitrary image to video model and try to generate long videos by repeatedly using the last generated frame as inputs. The result will mess up quickly after five or six times and everything will severely degrade. So in their uh, this thing, right, uh, they are doing something called as anti-drifting sampling and inverted anti-drifting sampling uh, to avoid this kind of a drifting happening in the video to generate long videos. That is what they are saying. Further details are present in their paper. Uh, this is an interesting technique for generating longer videos, an interesting neural network structure, okay, that generates videos progressively. The key highlights are that, you know, you can process very large number of frames with 13 billion models even on laptop GPUs. Frame pack can be trained with much larger batch size, similar to the batch size of image diffusion training. It is video diffusion, but feels like image diffusion. Okay. But I'm not really amazed or not really happy with the kind of videos, longer videos, which is getting generated. Okay. Maybe shorter videos look good. Even in these longer videos, which they have examples over here, you can easily make out that these are AI generated videos because, you know, the hand patterns and other things, it looks weird. It, it does not generate in an expected way, I would say. Okay. And on this L4 instance, it is really slow. Okay. Um, so as I said, to generate any kind of videos, it takes a lot of time over here. 90 minutes for a 20 second video. All right. Uh, so two, three minutes for each second. So 120 seconds is roughly 360, uh, which is close to six hours or something like that. Right. So it takes a lot of time. 